Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Plugged. Once again, my name is George Ruiz, better known as Negro's Party. And today, I bring you a Dominican soulful R&B artist raised in the Bronx, New York, with a style and a voice that can line up your soul and show you the pain and love that many of us have. From singing covers to being signed to Rock Nation, the voice that will bring you back to that R&B vibe. Angelica Villa. What's up, girl? How you doing? <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm doing pretty good. Um, Angelica, you know, you know, when did when did you say, you know, I can sing and you know, this is something I could do for the rest of my life? That's kind of hard to even answer because I always say stepping, but I've really been singing since I was so, so young. My mom and my sister told me that I've been singing since forever. And so, you know, I've been singing since I came out the womb, I'll just say. Oh, that, I mean, you know, I think, I think a lot of us, you know, when we have these uh, talents, sometimes it just starts at a very young age. Um, but I know that, you know, you know, through life, we learn experiences, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if you recall this moment, um, but you performed at the St. Jude's Hospital charity event. Um, mm -hmm. And you had an hour to remember this song. Um, uh, the song was Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. Um, mm, I am beautiful. Oh, man. I had an hour to learn that. Now, you know, you know, how was that experience? One with the, you know, the, kind of like the rush to learn the song, right? Um, but also, you know, the way that you perform and the fact that you also have kept this on your YouTube. It was super nerve wracking, especially being that it was my first performance ever. And, you know, it was for a, good, a great call. As a, so I was like, yes, I'm going to do it. But I was so nervous because I only had an hour to learn the song, an hour to get ready and get to the venue. I was like, oh, man. So I, it was very nerve wracking. I had just came out of like, what, middle school? And so, you know, first performance, yeah, you know how that goes. So nerve I think, you know, I think a lot, a lot of things like in this music industry, right? A lot, of, a lot of great opportunities sometimes come at a last minute, right? Um, and, and you have to sometimes drop everything you're doing and be like, you know, listen, this is what I want to do. I'm sorry. I had something planned, but you know, this is what I want to do. Um, now talk to me about, you know, these covers that you've done, you know, from the response to single to sorry, uh, to Justin Bieber, to covering the popular hits, um, from Adele, hello, Jay-Z, Holy Grail, uh, and the freestyle that, that really caught, um, a lot of attention on the wild thoughts. Um, especially Fat Joe's attention. Talk to me about, you know, covers and the importance that they have when you started. It was definitely important because that's how I grew my fan base. Like, I first started on YouTube and, you know, Instagram started getting popping. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to utilize Instagram and take advantage of it and use it to my, you know, my advantage. And so, yeah, it helped me. Like, it, it gained me a lot of followers, a lot of eyes, and, you know, a lot of respect from people because they seen that I kept doing it, kept doing it. And I wasn't stopping. I just kept going. Out of all of the covers, which one would you say is your favorite? Hello, because I just, I hit a different key that Adele didn't even hit. It was just, I was trying to change it up, do something a little different. Of, of course Adele could hit it. Adele, she is a fire, phenomenal artist, singer, vocalist, all of that. But I had made it into my own little, you know, cover. So I'm like, ah, right, let me do something different. And, you know, and so it's one of my favorites, yeah. All right. So, you know, I mentioned Fat Joe, right, because you call his attention. Um, and I know that he um, definitely gives you a lot of advice. Um, but he's, he was car quoting saying that um, we, we have our own studio engineers and everybody wanted to quit because she wanted to be working 20 hours a day, right? Um, I work, man. I work. <laughs> where, where, does that, where does that hunger come from? Where does, where does the that energy of, you know, working these endless hours back to back to back um, come from? I picked that up from my mom, really, because growing up, she's always been working. Like, she had three jobs at one point. And so, you know, just me realizing that I'm not where I want to be yet. You know, I have accomplished a lot, but I'm still not where I want to be. And so I wouldn't call it success. I would just say that, you know, that's what keeps me hungry. That's what keeps me motivated, knowing where I want to be at and knowing that I'm still not there yet. Um, talking about your mother, um, a single mother, uh, two siblings, um, a Dominican household in the Bronx, right? Um, that's actually the one thing I didn't have. My mom wanted to move to the Bronx, and I was like, nah, I'm not moving to the Bronx. Um, but you know, okay. where you live at now? I live in Jersey, I live in Newark. I live in Newark, right? okay? Okay, mm, Newark, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm playing. laughs> you, know, you know, living in Dominican households, right? There's a lot of artists that are resonate in our, in our childhood, right? Um, and I think that you know, as an artist. Um, and I think even as myself, right, this is certain things that I saw as I growing up that I picked up um, 
for my own personality. So I would like to know, you know, you know, what artists um and what genres um kind of influenced um you know your your art of making music. I really listened to Alicia Keys growing up. Like my mom, she was just playing her back to back to back, and I was just like, oh, I won't tell. I was like, yes. Um, my sister, she was playing a lot of like artists, different artists, because she has she's a DJ as well, so she has different variety of music that she listens to. So Ashanti, like a whole bunch of people. I listened to Aaliyah, Lauren Hill. Like it was just a whole bunch of like dope ass artists. Especially like J Lo coming from the Bronx or whatever. Yeah, Yo, you know, you listen to me. I'm I'm a, like a huge Alicia Keys fan, and um, when you hit, when you just hit that that note, I got like a recall of like the the video. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. So now you know. Let's let's just switch up gears now. Um, let's talk about this first project that you have on the Rock Nation. Um, and I know that for someone who's very hardworking, right? We sometimes have a uh, high expectation for what we want. You know. Yeah. Um, is 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 this project going in the direction that you want and what would you say would be the part when you're like yes i accomplished what i wanted from this i think yes it's actually doing like amazing i'm getting a lot of great feedback a lot of people is telling me like yo like you did your shit with this album so you know that that makes me feel more confident especially because i'm my worst critic and so, you know, I'm always overthinking, like, okay, should I do this? Should I not do this? But, you know, I, I made sure that with this album, I put everything that I wanted in there. I took everything that I wanted out of there. I made sure that, you know, I, I recorded the interludes on my own, literally in my bedroom. Like, I just wanted the story to make sense. And I wanted, like, the interludes to tie in everything so that when people listen to it, they'd be like, yo, I was going through the same thing. Like, seriously. So I just wanted to make it relatable. Um, talking about relatable, right? So what you know, I've so when if, when the project first dropped, um, I'm very close to the name, um, and I heard it, and I didn't really, I just kind of just heard it, just kind of like, oh, his name heard it, um, and now today I really sat down and I was analyzing it, and um, what I noticed is that no matter where you are in life, there's a song that can relate to it, right? Whether you're yeah. recently heartbroken, whether your hormones are all over the place and you want more in the morning. Um, <laughs> whether whether you're in the dating stage, right? I feel like this was, there was just always a song that can relate to some stage of it. Um, but I want to talk specifically about why with Jaquise. Um Okay, is this really what dating looks like for women? <laughs> I mean, probably not only for women, probably for men as well. But I mean, listen, I know that there's a whole bunch of people that you know be in the, in them dating apps like Tinder. Or like, which, which, I don't know. I forgot the other name. Bundle, uh, Bumble, I think Bumble. Yeah, I think it's Bumble. Um, there's a, yeah, like Christian I, Mingle. I, I, and it's like, you know, you meet some, <laughs> you meet somebody. And, it's, you know, sometimes what the, it says on their profile page really, you know, don't match up with when you actually meet them. And you're like, mm, I, I see you, I see, I see you, Catherine, now. And so it's like that, that's basically what the music video was expressing. It's like, Show me why I should cook, put my cookie on ice. Mm. And cookie on ice mean you you know what that yes, means. I, yo, yes, yes, I like the cookie on ice. Um, um, now you know, at the end of this video, right? Um, when they're showing the um the the, ¿cómo que se llama? the no, well, I don't really consider the bloopers. I, I I looked at it and I thought it was really good acting. So I, I, <laughs> thank I, you. I, I'm bringing up this question. You know, do you see yourself one day like you know behind the camera of a movie? Because Listen, I am trying to go beyond music. So it's not just music for me. I've always been into the entertainment realm or the entertainment world. So meaning fashion industry, like, and when I say fashion, I'm talking about makeup. I'm talking about clothing line. I'm talking about walking the runway, like as a, a model, because I am really tall. I'm like five, eight or something like that, five, nine. So I'm really tall. So, you know, and I'm photogenic. So I would want to do print modeling. I also want to dive into acting. I did some acting auditions during pandemic, like during the beginning or like, actually we're literally in the middle of the pandemic. So towards the beginning of the pandemic, I did a couple of auditions. So I, you know, I just, it's more than just music. So, you, you know, like, once again, the work just never stops. The work never stops. <laughs> now, um, you know, I think uh, one of the things that's really important is, um, you know, to be able to put uh, an artist's, like, culture inside of your music, right? Um, you know, you have, yeah. you have this song, uh, Your Plug, featuring uh, Jen Morrell yeah. and Mariah Angelique. Um, you know, 
what was the idea? Uh, where did the idea come from uh, to kind of add that fusion, right? Because you kind of get that bachata vibe at the beginning, and then you know it kind of the beat just drops and then it hits. You know, where does that come from? So we was in the studio. Actually, I was in the studio, and I was on Facetime with K Major, who is actually the producer of the record. And we was just talking. I was like, "Yo, I have yet to hear some sh like some song that you can twerk to." But still, there's bachata to it. And so I'm like, yo, we need to do it. And I remember when me and K Major was actually in the studio together, I was telling him that too. And so, boom, we w I was in the studio and he was in ATL. He was making the beat on, on FaceTime. He sent it to me. I laid out an idea. Then we had a second session. And in that second session, it was my brother and my sister, and as well, as well with K Major. And we took some of the parts out of the idea that I put on there. And then my sister, she had came up with something funny. It was like completely off beat, but you know, it's her first time, like, you know, actually incorporating something into a song. So she's like, suave, batilento, yo quiero movimiento. <laughs> and so I was laughing. So I was like, wait, wait, wait. But I could flip it like to suavecito, papi, eyes on me. Solo quiero todo tu movimiento. And so she's like, ooh. So it, it, family was involved with it. And then my brother, he ain't never been in no booth or nothing. And he was whispering in my ear, like, yo, you should do something like did it, did it, did it. And I was like, yo, go to the booth. Just go in there. Like, don't be afraid. So <laughs> he went in there. He was like, um, did it, did it, did it. Which was the first four bars of the song. And so K Major went inside the booth and he was like, What with my money at? Come with the bag. I don't want none of that. Keep it up. Yeah. That's just, listen. So that's how the song came about. You know, I, I think I think that's the almost like the, the part that I feel like a lot of fans love to hear. The the way that, you know, some of these great uh tracks are made of, right? Because who would think like, oh listen to my brother said this, my sister did this, and yeah. that it came up, right? Um, and it's yeah, it's all with family. And that you know, I think I think that's great. Also, you know how family is involved with projects like this. Um, but let's talk about um another track here. Um, all I do is for you. Um, how was working with Davis in the video? Because I saw him in the video and and I felt like there was a very good vibe in the video. And obviously his look is very like penetrating too. So how was that? It was good. I mean, it, it, the like the music video vibe was good. He was very re respectful. He was humble. So it was definitely like a, a funny vibe because we were trying to keep a straight face because the camera's like right behind us in the car. And so he's just driving. I'm like, <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh. He was trying so hard not to laugh, but it was a vibe. It was a vibe. Um, do, can we see somewhere in the future a track, you and Davies? I mean, listen, I'm down. So, Davies, if you're down to do a song together, let's get it. All right. Uh, and now, um, we got, I think this is the last song, um, More in the Morning, right? Um, there's definitely a sexual presence. Um, <laughs> you know, how, how important is for for women uh, to take um, ownership of their sexuality, um, you know, through this message that you sent through the song. And um, also, what I saw, and which I don't see in a lot of new artists, is that you're part of the choreography as well. Right? Yes. Um, so talk to me about that. Um, <laughs> talk to me about that and how was that experience? It was so much fun, especially being that like I really wanted choreography incorporated in this into this because I love to dance. And so, you know, I definitely wanted to get more in tune with the dancing. So I'm like, ooh, I can't and a bet bet ah. <laughs> so I still remember the dance, like choreography was so much fun. I did it with Jamaica Jamaica Craft and her team. So shout out to Jamaica Craft and Brandon, everybody who, you know, had a, played a part in the choreography. But that was so much fun. And then just doing the the more in the morning video in general, it was like a crazy experience. We did it in LA. We did it with Mike Hole. And yeah, it's just legendary. Mad people. Like yeah. Joe was there. So I, you know, from so from morning, uh from morning in the morning, you know, I, I get a lot of the 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 sexual passion, right? Um Yes. And I and I brought up the sexuality in it because, you know, I feel like it's important for uh for women to take, kind of take ownership of it. Cause I also feel like society puts a pressure onto like, you can't be too much, right? Or you can't I be- I mean, really, much. honestly, what I have to say about that, it's like the same thing that guys be wanting, we all human. Sometimes girls be wanting the same thing. Yes. It ain't no same and same, man. 
Yes. Girls, sometimes we wanted the same thing that men be wanted, but you know, the, the, the standards in society say that, you know, guys can embrace it even more. And we here, us women, we are here to say fuck that standard. We are, we are all equal. We are all the same and we all feel the same shit. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Mic drop there. Um, but before we get out of here, um, yo, what, what, what does the future hold? You know, where, where, is, where are you going? What, what's, what's, what's your fit? Not, not, I don't want to say your finish line, but you know, what's that peak of that mountain that you want to get to right now? I really want to like dive into, like I was saying, like the acting, like it's past music for me. So yeah, I love to do music, but I also love to like do the entertainment world or even do shows and stuff like that, which is a part of the entertainment world. But aside from the music side, it's definitely like doing the acting, doing the fashion stuff. Like I, I know how to do my own makeup. So, you know, if I could either be a brand ambassador for a makeup line, I'm definitely down to do that. Or if it's me creating my own makeup line and my own fashion line, like I definitely want to dive into, like I, I keep an open mind. So if it's something new, like I believe in the saying that if you are comfortable, then you're not growing. And so I like to, you know, keep you know, an open mind. I like to, you know, make myself feel uncomfortable, you know, even you know. like not uncomfortable to the, you know, to the point where I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But it's like, if I know, if I, if I say, mm -mm, I wouldn't do that. Like, as far as like something creative, I'm going to be like, let me try it. You never know. Like, that's what I mean by like, I like to try anything, keep an open mind, even if I'm uncomfortable with doing it. No, I think you said something very important, right? It's the the. the if you're comfortable, then you're not growing. Exactly, you know, and and if you and if and it's real easy to stay there, right? Because you know, right. I think sometimes um you know we have people who share their um their fears on us, and a lot of the fears is to be uncomfortable, right? Um, right. We sometimes fall into that trap. Um, Angelica, where can we find you? Um. Where can we find Deceptions uh, season two? Where, where I want everything. Where can we do it? You can you can find Deception season one <laughs> everywhere. You can find me at Angelica Villa A N G E L I C A V I L A. Perfect, baby girl. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to do this. This was great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I'll we'll stay in touch and everything else. Once again, this is plugged. I'll just go to the next party. Your girlfriend's trending topic.